Let's now uncomment section 11 and see what we should do. Okay, select and control forward slash. Okay, so now you can see that for BB, which was declared as of type birthday book. Now we should support a new method here. And now it's bb.name exists A. So first of all, should this be a mutator or an accessor? Remember, okay, let's see how we did uh, de uh, determine the previous mutators. For example, over here, you have, this is a method call just by itself. There's no return value expected from this method call. On the other hand, you can see the way we made this method call here, bb.name exists when we are trying to print out its value. So that means it, sh it should return something, okay? Let's see what that return value is, okay? If you simply go to the PDF, you will see that for number 11, it tells you false, okay? So it should be false or true. You can also see that uh, name exists. Let me see if I got any other cases over here. You can see that over here in line number, uh, section 17, a little bit look ahead. So now name exists can either be true or false. True or false, that seems to be obvious that we should use a Boolean type rather than string. You will see that uh, the Boolean type is actually more useful, okay? So now initially the birth table is simply empty. So no name should exist. So if you test A, B, and C, they should all return false, okay? So now we're gonna ret uh, define this method, a accessor which returns Boolean in birthday book class. So let's go to birthday book, okay? So now let's do over here, public boolean name exists. And over here, I'm going to actually, let me just make sure the name is correct, name exists and name exists over here. So let's do the complete definition now so we can uh, save time for later, okay? So boolean over here, we can say name found, okay? You can certainly do, I will, actually show you the most compact version for defining the name exists because later on you're going to actually see that for quite a few methods like how you add an entry how you remove an entry very often you have to somehow see if the name really exists in the book okay more or less there will be a, one of the sub steps so i would say let's define a helper method first and then i will show you how can how you can use the helper method in at least three different places, you will see that, okay? So now, first of all, let's define a helper method as private, let's say integer, you can say index of name, okay? And over here, I'm gonna have, or you can just say index of, doesn't really matter, index of the name in the book, okay? So now remember, the birthday book is gonna store an array of entries, and each entry has a name and has a birthday. So now we want to say, given the name, we want to know where that particular entry is that contains this name over here, right? Let's imagine that if you got only two entries in the birthday book, let's say the first one is Alan with some birthday, the second entry is Mark with some birthday. Now, if I say index of Alan, in this case, he is the first entry, so the index should be zero. If I say index of Mark, the entry should be of index one, so the return value should be one. If I say index of Tom, in this case, Tom does not exist in the entry list, so that should be minus one, okay? So you can either return a valid index into the uh, entries array, or you can return minus one to say that the name does not exist. Okay, let's see how we can do that. Integer, let's say index, let's just say minus one, just in case we don't find it, so that will be return the index eventually. But now we're going to say for integer i is zero i stand. So you should really know that we should always try to iterate through the array because before this entries array is filled up with all the uh, addresses of the entries, it might contain null slots. So in this case, really have to be careful, okay? So now we can say i plus plus. Okay, so now the common mistake is, again, I just mentioned again, common mistake is that i is less than entries dot length. Okay, that's not something, that's something we want to avoid. So now you can say entry, the current entry we're looking at is simply entries and position i, 
and then the name we're looking at of the entry is e.getName. And now we can say that if the current one is the one we're looking for, if n.equals name, in this case, we have found it. In this case, you can simply just return, for example, you can say return i, that will do, okay? So now, and then if you happen to exit from the loop, that means you never get a chance to return i, which means no name has been found equal to the name you're looking for. In that case, of course, we can just return minus one, return the index, okay? That's what you can do. If you want to make it a little bit more, if you don't like to have return statement within your loop, this is what you can do alternatively, okay? I'll just show you to you. You can say, boolean name is found, initially just false. Okay, we'll say we're gonna stay in the loop as long as i is a valid index, uh, it's actually i is a valid index within, uh, bounded by NOE. And also we haven't found the entries, okay? And over here, we can say that once we found it, we can say index is assigned to i, and then found is assigned to true. As soon as this is set to be true, and then we can see that when you, this is set to true, and when you go back to this part over here, not true will be false, which will cause the loop to exit. And then we'll simply return i, because i was simply as used to assign index right before we exit the loop, okay? You can use either way, okay? I'll just keep this version over here. Okay, so now, once we have defined this helper method here, which is private, I will show you that we can use that in a number of places. So I would say this is quite a common helper method that you can uh, make use of. You can learn that, right? So now name exists. What does it mean when a name exists? That means there is a corresponding entry there whose get name return value will be uh, simply the name that we're looking for. So if you go back there, you can see name exists should take a string argument here. So now let's go back there. So now we can say, String name. So now, we don't have to run a loop anymore. We don't have to write it out explicitly. We can simply call this helper method that we just defined. Integer index is index of, and then we're calling that helper method there. Now, what does it really mean when a name exists? So we can say return index larger than or equal to zero. Notice that it's larger than or equal to zero because we're saying that as long as it returns a valid index of the entries array, that means the, the, uh, the name exists. There is a corresponding entry whose name is just name. Otherwise, if it's less than zero, the negation of this, that means the uh, entry with the corresponding name does not exist. Okay, that's kind of the logic. Try to get, get through this. You'll see that this now, becomes incredibly simple, simply because we have defined some helper method here. And we can actually use this helper method for a number of times, which is really worth doing. Okay, and so go back there and make sure we really got the correspond, uh, expected output. It should be three falses over here, false and false for number 11, right? So let's just try to run this code over here. So you can see false, false, and false, okay? But uh, still, we are running a simple case where the uh, book is simply empty. So we haven't, for now, one thing to note, because the book is simply empty, so it should be quite trivial that uh, any name should not just exist, okay? So let's try to convert uh, these three into the uh, uh, JUnit test. Let's go back to the test, and now let's have 11. Test public void test 11. Okay, and then we're going to now do this. We're going to put this and make sure we create an empty birthday book to begin with for this particular test. And now we're going to convert from print statement into assertion. Let's say assert false for all three of them because initially no names exist in the empty book, okay? That's a simple case, but we have tried to define our uh, name exist method in the most complete way possible. So we'll see, uh, hopefully that will just save our time for later, okay? You don't really have to 
do the method just to make the test case pass. You can just do to the full detail as you think necessary. Okay, so now this one should be false. This one should be false. And this one should also be false. Okay? Make sure you put a semicolon at the end. So now if you run the test, okay, so now so far we have got 12 tests and all of them pass. 